<laughs> what is shaken? It is episode 080, episode 80 of the Golden Mike Live with my girl, Cassie. Cassie, not Casey. For those of you looking at the screen saying, Casey Brown, you're saying it completely wrong. Shame on anybody who would ever call Cassie Casey. Shame on you. Shame on you. Now, this is what we're going to talk about today. For those of you who have ever been thinking like, oh, my God, like I've been fo following some sort of model for success. I've been following like someone else's rules. I've been playing within the, um, within the status quo and the rules they set for me. That's why Cassie just put on her work hat and came on this show. Cassie Brown, kick-ass mom. Cassie <laughs> Brown, entrepreneur. Cassie Brown, who's going to talk about how to create your own definition of success today. Cassie, like, I cannot wait for us to get into this. And by the way, why were you late? No one is ever late on my... <laughs> <laughs> it was me. I'm actually coming in late, y'all. <laughs> For those of you who haven't met me, it's your boy, Mark Cordone, founder of the Make Money Coaching Program, and I'm proud to announce the founder of the Joy Revolution. Um, and more importantly, I'm a positive psychology coach, which means this. Don't worry about the empirical data. Don't worry about all this other stuff. Just ask yourself this. On a scale of 1 to 10 today, how happy am I feeling? And then also on a scale of one to 10 today, how much um, purpose am I living by? So Cassie Brown, I have to ask you that. Like, are you feeling good and are you living in full purpose today? I absolutely am. <laughs> now Cassie, do you forgive me for being 10 minutes late on my own? <laughs> yes, I do because I am the type of person that when I make plans, it's got an ish on the back of it. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that I beat somebody somewhere is like, woo, it's so <laughs> rare. And I'm going to just fly on that for the rest of the day. <laughs> I love it. I love it. The, uh, I love the fact that you're not phased. Y'all, welcome to the Golden Mic. It is good to see you. For those of you watching live, those of you watching the replay, if you're feeling good, and living life with your full purpose. Cassie, put the hands up. Give us some hearts. Let us know how you're feeling on this Tuesday. How do you beat the heart over there in Georgia? How do you beat your heart over there in Georgia? Oh my gosh. Um, I've got four hearts. You know, I've got four kids. And it's one of those things where it's like, you have, they are my purpose. You know, mm -hmm. it's one of those where everyone always tells you, you you'll never understand until you hold that newborn baby. And that's kind of like what purpose is, you know, yeah. um, you will not understand until it's like literally right there in your face. And then there's nothing else that you can think about. Um, it'll keep you up at night and it just, you know, becomes your world. So my family and my purpose is what beats the heart. I can't wait to talk about your family and your purpose and stuff and in getting to know you over the past couple months. Um, you've had quite the story. You've had quite the story of family and entrepreneurship and purpose and redefinition of it. And I can't wait to go there. Um, so thank you all for beating those hearts. Now, here's the other thing for those of you are like, oh my God, Cordon driving me crazy again, screaming in the mic, being the professional wrestler. For those of you who I'm I'm really like that. Cassie knows this. Um, Casey knows it too. <laughs> For those of you who think positive psychology is about like the shits and giggles and 24-7 um happiness, um it that's not it. That's not it. If 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 you're feeling happy 24-7 uh, that is not the joy revolution. If you're happy 24 seven, you're either dead or um, you're a sociopath. <laughs> so uh, welcome sociopaths to the group. Give us a like. But uh, more importantly, it's about the ups and the downs and the all arounds of life. It's about feeling the feels, um, feeling all of the experiences. And for those of you who have woken up today and you're like, Cordell and Cassie, I, I don't 
feel as happy as I did yesterday. I don't know what's going on, right? Uh, that is cool. That is super cool. That's part of your journey, right? The other thing is if you're feeling like your purpose is like changing and you're confused about it and you're like, I used to know what it was that I wanted to do, um, but I'm feeling like it's scripted. It, I'm feeling like it's different now. That is cool as well, my friends. That's part of your journey. Your heart beats just like Cassie and mine. So for those of you who are all about that, you're living the dream, you're pushing through, um, you're not settling, you're not striving, you're not over striving, but things aren't quite where you want them to be, just give us a thumbs up. Let us know that you're alive. Sit back, enjoy the show, because we're just going to entertain you for the next couple minutes, uh, 50 minutes now since Cassie was late. Now, here's the other thing. <laughs> Here's the other thing. This is the big reason why I do the joy revolution. This is the reason why I do um, uh, positive psychology. If you feel optimistic that tomorrow is going to be better than today, not the fact that you're just striving for tomorrow, but you just know that every day is going to get better. If you feel optimistic about that, there's another button down there, whether you're one or or a 10 if you're feeling optimistic. Cassie, you know what I'm gonna do. I want y'all, welcome to the club, Cassie, to make your wow face. <laughs> I love this woman. I love this woman. I have been practicing. I know, I know what you set the bar at. I have been practicing. <laughs> so like, do you, do you like look in the mirror? Did you look in the mirror before the show? And were you like, no, I have a four year old. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. So thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on the show, Cassie. I'm just going to go right there today because you have so much to talk about. And this idea of purpose is so huge to everybody. But even before we talk about purpose, what is your story? Okay. Well, so my story um, from the beginning, I mean, I was raised in an entrepreneurial family. So, um, you know, I, I always kind of start there because a lot of people are here and now, like in the digital age where it's a small world and it's really connected. And, but I mean, I was answering the phones at 12 years old, you know, so I learned really quick about, you know, the etiquette and the rules of society and how to treat somebody the way you want to be treated. And I really kind of felt like that golden rule has carried me through life. And, um, you know, I went, did good in college, got my master's, I married my college sweetheart, you know, um, worked in the family business for a little while, had a stint in corporate America before my eyes were opened and the lights from heaven came down and shined that light that I was free, started my own business. <laughs> Um, I started with photography, and um, this is kind of where we take a big turn. Okay. Um, we had uh, started our family in Florida. I'm a Jacksonville, Florida girl, born and raised, never lived anywhere, um, small town country girl. Like, I could probably count my flights on one hand at this point. Um, but my photography business was growing. I was starting to get more destination weddings. So, like, our lives you know, we're getting busier. Um, at the time we had, um, two boys. I just had a newborn little girl and we relocated from Florida to Georgia. So, um, for the opportunity for photography. Um, actually it was my husband's job. Okay, um, gotcha. I could, I could go anywhere. I could hop anywhere, okay. um, that I needed to go. And it was just North of Atlanta, close to an airport. So we were cool. We had family that lived here. Um, we moved that summer. Um, my husband celebrated his 30th birthday. And then that fall, he had a seizure that revealed a brain tumor. So like world stopped. Um, the momentum stopped. Um, our life as we know it stopped. You know, the priority became, let's figure out what this is. Uh, what are our options? You know, it moved from getting settled into a new town, thinking about, you know, my growing business to, is he going to survive? You know, so when you get to that point in life, a lot of things become very clear on where your priorities were and where they should be. Mm -hmm. 
So this I always kind of say is my biggest revelation because you think to that point, you've got it all figured out. You know, you're 30 years old, you got your life ahead of you and you're feeling invincible. You know, like brain tumor wasn't even in our vocabulary. You know, um, bills, trust, you know, all of that you don't think about at 30 years old. At 30 years old, you know, the world is your oyster. You know, you can, you know, you can take risks, you can make mistakes. And then so dramatically changed. We found a surgeon. He went through surgery that December. And what was supposed to be a three day process turned into 10 days of ICU. Uh, with him only being released into a 30 day rehabilitation program. So he couldn't even come home. We spent that Christmas in the rehab facility. Um, thank goodness they had a family apartment where we could set up the Christmas tree and Santa could come to the kids. Um, but you talk about like purpose and, and appreciating what time you have and not wasting it and operating from that center of gratitude and you know and it's like you said you don't live in that i mean this was our darkest time mm -hmm. you know there were there were days where it was you know tears you know that roller coaster of you know frustration and then thankfulness and then you know what comes next it, will he be able to walk our daughter down the aisle like all of the unknowns um, but somehow we made it through, um, with joy in our hearts, but it's because we were able to realize there was a greater purpose, you know, like, and I really feel like though I would never choose to go through it again, um, I really feel like it was a gift in knowing that we have only so much time and we have gifts and talents that we were all given and we have a responsibility to not squander that time or those gifts or or just waste one moment unhappy complaining not settling where you're at there's just too much potential within all of us so that became our rally cry um, and a base of where we're operating from now. Oh, wow. So really pivoting, um, pivoting forward on it. Um, uh, uh, number one, Cassie, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> you, no one apologizes on this show. You know, you can apologize for being 10 minutes late, but not on this show. Um, especially when you're talking about your story, right? Um, you have quite a bit to be proud of and, and your husband is still with us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right on. Right on. So I have, as every three months, we just stay on top of that baby. <laughs> so let me, let me ask you this. I want to ask you about that, that idea of purpose, but what do you, what did you tell your kids when you were going through this? Because it was the darkest of times. What, and you, you, you basically talked about your, family being the most important thing. What do you tell them when those things were going on? Well, at the point in time, they were really young. So we would let them know when we had appointments and that, I mean, the, the best way that we could explain it is that daddy has a big boo-boo in his head, you know, because they don't understand all the scientific terms and, you know, the different areas of the brain and what can be operated on and what can not, but they, they could easily associate doctors and boo-boos and, you know, follow-up appointments and all of that type of stuff. And um, we did not want to give, like, they're still learning how to deal with stress and anxiety and, you know, process information. So we weren't sugarcoating it to where, you know, oh, nothing's wrong with dad. Um, we were very honest and we had a lot of conversations with them. Um, but at the same time, we held a lot back um, because we were hopeful, you know, um, it was one of those things where it's like we weren't going to go down that path. Um, we knew uh, with any surgery, you know, there's 
there's that risk of complications. Um, but we picked a phenomenal surgeon, you know, we, we lined everything up the best that we could. Um, but we had really open communication, um, yeah. with them. And, and if they asked questions, we would answer it as best as we could. And, you know, we let them voice their concerns and, you know, they, they joined us, you know, and, and going to the doctors and the, and the appointments and they helped him, you know, the nurses would be going through exercises with him and then the kids would come and do the same thing. <laughs> yeah. So awesome. Um, so, I mean, it really was a, 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 a family trauma and a family recovery. Yeah. Um, I, I'm also curious what was going through your head when, um, I forgot the name of your husband. Uh, Adam. Adam. So when so when Adam is on in in before the pre-surgery and you know that it's about to happen, um, and they're gonna they're gonna you know he's gonna go on he's gonna go under right. What's going through your mind at that point? Where I am. See, here's the thing. I am a ridiculous optimist, um, but I was. I had my heels dug in with this surgery. I was mm -hmm. like, I don't, I don't think it's necessary. Can we just monitor it? You know, when, when you don't have an understanding about everything and you can't really wrap your mind around it, like it's fear, it, it's very fearful. And you think staying in the spot you're in is better than taking a step forward. And so, um, and he is usually the realist and he is usually the one who, who is like, worst case scenario prep guy. Um, and he was like, I'm gonna be fine. I've watched, he was watching YouTubes on brain surgery like two days after um, he, <laughs> he had a brain tumor. And and just like, yeah, I like this guy's stuff. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I am in total denial. And he's he is in research mode and watching videos because he knows he has to be awake during surgery. Um, but honestly, my saving grace was they had him on a slew of medications and they, um, so I was comfortable there. Like I was in my comfort zone, but um, just a week before he was supposed to go into surgery, he had another seizure, um, even with all the medications that he was on. And so it was, I kind of think it was that, you know, God telling me this is the right path. You have to stay on it. You have to have the surgery. And I, cause I just told him at that point, I couldn't live like that. Um, I was present with both seizures. And if you've ever had, if you've ever witnessed someone having a seizure, it's, it's sure. horrible. It is the most helpless feeling you, you have ever had in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wanted to recognize Jorge peace and love. Jorge, I've missed you. We've been looking for you the past couple of days. It's good to see you. Best in the world you are. Um, we're, we've got those sh shirts coming out for you. And this is a perfect time to pivot. What was, like you said that there was a greater purpose that that really came from like a, almost a perspective shift that happened now um, as a result of, of, of this of what you and Adam and the family were going through, what, like, what did that begin to look like for you? And how was it different before and after? Like, what was it, like, what came from this? Was it the fact that life is precious? Like, is that, like, we don't have unlimited time? Cause I, I remember when I, I was 30, um, one year ago, you know, like, uh, <laughs> you know, and, no, I, I didn't think about, I, I did not think about my uh, mortality or my, even my morbidity. You know, I, I was just 30, you know, trying to get through a PhD program and stuff. And so what, what did purpose look like before that? Um, I think the biggest takeaway is that, you know, when you're fighting for something bigger than yourself, you can take on anything. and what we started to realize is we're this community of support just rallied around us. I mean, perfect strangers were sending us, you know, gift cards in the mail, cards of encouragement, words of encouragement, you know, prayer groups all over. And, and we were thankful. We were just so thankful and so humbled. But the thing that really floored me was I got so many comments about, 
just the way the way that you guys are dealing with this is so encouraging like I never even realized we had that power because we weren't, you know, we were openly struggling. And, but when you realize that you can encourage others and it's not just about you and there's a reason for this pain and you can never disassociate growth from pain. Um, so it just kind of those light bulbs started going off. Like this has got to be, you know, giving us perspective for a reason and preparing us to pay it forward. And so once we got on the other side of it, we were just completely committed to paying it forward in every way that we could um, because we did have so many people just pour into us during those times. Mm -hmm. I have to ask this because you're pushing through this. I have to recognize this. This is a very emotional topic for you um and you're you're trying to apologize to me what's going through your head is this a sadness that's showing up is it's hard i'm not sensing that this it's is always sadness. Hard. it's always hard to discuss it because i think it is one of those things where you know you still kind of believe like if you if you give something attention and words like it might come back so there's a little bit of that but it's also like it's been such a profound um, season in our life that I, I don't even know what today would look like if if it had happened differently because uh, we've both grown exponentially and are who we are because of it. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about that growth, baby. Let's <laughs> talk about that growth. I think it's the perfect time to talk about it. Um, we're now moving past things, um, you know, those those 30 days of complete hell. Um, you're beginning to see the the sort of the the light at the end of the tunnel. You're still worried, even to today, like oh, yeah. worried that it might come back, right? Um, but also at the same time, there's a semblance of a new normal in the family, and you're reestablishing yourself. Where do you go with that new purpose, sort of that, that greater sense of purpose and make that actionable in your life? Because it's one thing to be like, ah, you know, apple came from the tree, yeah. so, you know, struck, God struck me with lightning. And then now the next thing I know, what do you do with that? Um, I think the biggest realization is, is um, the more people we talk to, we realize we're not in a unique situation. You know, there are, um, it may not be as extreme or there may be families who are going through something who is, is even more difficult, you know, where where we've we've had families that are in stage four of certain types of cancers where, you know, um, what is at the end of the road, but you still have to walk that journey. Um, I think for us, the biggest thing was knowing that there are tons of people out there like us and realizing the reason or a lot of the reason we were able to deal with the things we were able to deal with is because we did both have the freedom and flexibility to work from home. So um, like our kind of aha moment was, was what can we do for those other families and parents and caregivers and those with the medical diagnosis? What can we do for them who are struggling in the same way, who, um, who appreciate time, but they may, you know, they're, they're stuck in that box that we're conditioned to be in, you know, at a young age where you go to school, you do well, you get good grades, you go to college, um, you know, you get a great job, you work hard, and then you get a promotion. And if you're good, you get to retire. And that formula just like it, it doesn't work for everyone. And it does work for some people and that's okay. Um, but we wanted to kind of be that beacon and, and help um, bridge the gap of education and opportunity to let people know that there is another way and you don't have to wait for someone to tap you on the shoulder and give you permission to take it. Mm, mm, nice. So what's, what are some ways, and that's what you've created your business around now, like sort of, these values of freedom, of these values of family, of the, these values of um, service to something greater than yourself, but doing it your way, right? Absolutely. So 
what are some of the ways that we can create success for ourselves without having to, you know, follow these kind of uh, formulaic blueprints? Um, well, the first step is to give yourself grace and realize that every thing that has brought you to this point in your life can be turned into an asset. There is not one struggle or experience or mistake or anything that cannot be flipped on its side and used to build your ladder to whatever success looks like for you. Mm, that makes so much sense. And um, I think um, that idea of giving yourself grace is it, it, like, um, you know, people will see trauma and they'll, you know, a lot of times they'll say, what's, what can I get out of this trauma? But then in other areas of their life, for example, joy, they go and they're like, okay, I'm off to the next thing. I'm off to accumulate the next thing. And you don't see that you can extrapolate value from all of the moments, the, 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 the uh, trauma and the ecstasy. I love that. I love that. Um, is mindset something that comes into play? Oh gosh. Mindset is the cornerstone of everything. Um, oh, okay. I really honestly feel like it's your, I mean, it's your first line of defense. You know, if you haven't built up that barrier of protection, um, you can sink fast and it's not something that happens overnight. And I think that's the one thing that I took through this is just the mindset of it. Um, you know, and it could you might just have to take baby steps. Let me get through these 30 minutes. Let me get through this hour. Let me get through this day. Um, but then you start pacing yourself and then all of a sudden it becomes this week, this month, this year, this season. And you look back and you see how far you've come. Um, and mindset is one of those things where it's like a muscle. I mean, it's use it or lose it, baby. And a lot of people shy away from talking about it because they really don't want to put their weaknesses on display. Um, but again, I, I still think that they can always be turned into a strength because, you know, you are formed by the things that you continually get back up and stand against, you know, and keep going. Yeah, absolutely. And from, from someone who's experienced the really dark, dark times, and, and I know that you're like people, everyone goes through this kind of human experience. You know, you, you and Adam and the family have found that out and talking to other people. Um, can you change your mindset without a trauma? I think you can. It's a. Con it's just like anything else that takes a conscious effort. Um, I don't think I. I mean, if you were to ask me before we went through all of this, like I was pretty centered on gratitude. You know, I mm. again, I was really raised in a small town. You know, we had a big family with one bathroom, you know, one shower and you start to appreciate things, you know. Um, so I don't really know that you have to go through a trauma, but I think it helps if you have kind of this presence of mind and can be a little empathetic to others. And there's probably some situations you could put yourself in if you needed to build up that empathy. I'm an empathetic person, so it's very easy for me, but I do realize that there are some people who are like, I don't get it. Why is she so much like it's totally unaffected to them. So, you know, serve someone else. You know, if you, if you really want to start, you know, changing your mindset and your perspective, just, just see how you can help someone else. And through that experience, you will start realizing that, you know, you'll see someone else's circumstances for, and then all of a sudden, oh my gosh, it's not terrible that I caught that red light or that I'm 10 minutes late for a meeting, you know, yeah. it's, you know, life kind of falls into place and you start to realize, you know, there are more important things in life than what I think should be my main priority. Absolutely. It's such an illusion for so many of us. And I also think that this idea of success could be an illusion. And like, where does that all come into place? Because like, I'm hearing your story and you were like, man, you know, Adam and I, from a professional standpoint, we're really skyrocketing when we moved to Atlanta. And what is, did, what is your um, 
definition of success and how has that changed over the years as a result of what y'all have gone through? That's an excellent question. And it's not one that I've really reflected on. I mean, I've done a lot of internal reflecting, but I haven't yeah. really spoken publicly about it. Um, at the time in the photography world, you know, if you were constantly booked, if you were jetting from city to city, like that is what success looks like. You know, your beautiful Instagram feed, you know, this meeting, that meeting, this feature, this magazine published, like that was the picture of success. But if you took a step back and as a mom, if I'm flying from city to city, constantly popping in and out of airports, the, I am, you can't be present somewhere without being absent somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So that success, which is what the industry told me, what success is, you know, everybody watching, everybody wanting to be me. And if you're not careful, you start to build your success and your idea of it that way. And I started looking at it like, how busy can I be? And then I would be editing pictures and watching my kids flash and play in the pool with my husband while I had another eight hours of editing to do. And, you know, I, I remember watching them one day and it's like, this is crazy. Like, this is not what I want my life to look like. I yeah. don't want to be busy, you know? So that changed dramatically. You know, success for me is going and playing the pool. Um, this morning when Farrah got up and got ready for school, she wasn't quite ready to wake up yet. So she came in my lap, even though I got up and I was working, but I stopped everything and I just snuggled with her for 10 minutes until she was ready you know, to get going again. And that for me is success. You know, going to Disney when we want to go to Disney, um, going to lunch, being there for their, you know, Mother's Day tea parties and all of that type of stuff. You know, you it's all it almost became like, how much would someone have to pay me to miss the Mother's Day tea party? Like hmm. that is what the shift in success yeah. looked like for me. Well it sounds it sounds like the previous version of success, like sort of the success when you're on front stage and everyone's watching, right? Is more of a success that is uh, maybe a performance and one in which it takes away from your ability to be present yeah, versus yeah. success backstage is much more, um, you know, maybe it's, it's harder to measure except for the fact that you get to be present. Uh, I got to ask you this, dude, do you get angry? <laughs> you seem like the most chill person. <laughs> Do you get like I'm trying like I've been trying to I mean until you got all serious on me I've been trying to provoke you since like the very beginning because you seem like such a gentle person. Do you get do you yell at anybody? I do. I do. Okay. But <laughs> it usually takes me asking like the fifth or sixth time before I blow my top. <laughs> okay. Morning. When was the when was the last time you yelled? <laughs> I just, so we're, we're in the middle of moving. So oh, that's that's big time right there. It was this weekend, yeah. <laughs> I realized how spoiled our kids are and how how little amount of manual labor they really do. <laughs> I just needed to post that. Cassie Brown yelled at someone this weekend. <laughs> so um. You know, I think with uh, I think with success, I I need to ask you that. I mean, in <laughs> you've talked a lot about um, uh, kindness. You've you've talked a lot about um, uh, about success. What about the idea of of community? Because like you touched about on it a little bit, but I mean, I have to be totally honest. Like, well, it's not that I'm lying, but like community is a big deal to me, you know, and you and I have been a part of communities and uh, you've been a part of a community that I've led. And, and hopefully you've seen that it's a big deal the way that the community comes around and, and we treat each other in those communities. Uh, also, at the same time with me, like as I've, for lack of a better term, leveled up, there's some people I've had to let go of. And then there's new people that I've been able to make space for. How, what, what is your take on, on community um, either personally or, 
you know, as you're doing this, you know, uh, you know, entrepreneurship, you're creating your new status quo. Cause a lot of people could be like, yo dude, like, what are you doing? You're supposed to do it this way. You're supposed to be front stage. Yeah. Um, community for me goes back to when I started, you know, answering phones at 12 years old. Like it mm. was the personal interaction with someone. It was the human touch and the connectedness. And I remember struggling with my mom because she is, you know, our parents' generation is completely old school when it comes to business and personal. Like it's nothing personal, it's just business. You know, that made my skin crawl because how can you separate yourself from anything that you create or any business that you're a part of? So that has always been with me. I even remember struggling and, and arguing with my college professors that relationship marketing was one of the most important areas of any type of marketing. Um, and I, I, almost every paper I ever wrote was on that because you can't fake a relationship. You have to invest in it. You can't just show up and, and throw your business cards up and say, you know, give me your business and not give any value or commitment or, or invest in someone while they invest in you to know that you're going to be around in five or six years, you know? And so I think it is ultimately, and even now today in the digital age, because anybody can be a good marketer, anybody can look great on the surface, but what's going to help you stand out and what's really going to set your business apart is who you are in front of the camera, who you're, who are you are on social media, on the ball field, in your home, who are you in every aspect of your life? And you can't hide from that with social media today. Mm, you no. put up no. an easy front, you know, I mean, some people can and they'll get away with it for a little while, but they're not, those people aren't going to be back, you know? And so to me, um, personal and business wise, like the lifetime value of relationships, you have to give it your all and you have to invest in them because those people who truly love you, they're going to be with you at your lowest at your highest, they're gonna cheer you on. And when you get down on yourself, they're gonna kick you in the pants and challenge you to do better. You know, so I just, I'm very passionate about community just like you are, so. I'm right you are, and Danny's recognizing it. Cassie <laughs> Brown for the win, love you girl. I think we all do. Um, let's, uh, let's go into this a little bit further. For those of us who have not heard the term relationship marketing, how is that different from marketing marketing? Well, it? well, it is. I mean, it is different because there's two schools of philosophy where um, most good marketers will tell you to deliver value before you ever ask for something in return. Um, but I think relationship marketing pushes it even further. Whereas you want your client or your peer or your competitor to succeed, no matter if you get the dollar or not. I think it goes beyond the sale, whereas the intention to serve the bigger purpose is a lot better. Like there's a long game in play here. I may not profit from this sale, the next one, or maybe the third or fourth or fifth, but if I have a client for life, I would rather invest in them and break even than constantly being, you know, trying to get new that aren't a good fit or that are struggling to connect with me or that, you know, give me a bad review or don't like the service or are unhappy with the service. Um, even in photography, like, uh, I, I didn't ever disappoint anyone, but like the ones that I struggled with the most were the ones that had taken the least time to build a relationship with. And the, the ones that I did invest in, like I, I was a wedding photographer, but they would call me when they were pregnant and started their family. We would do newborn, we would do maternity, we would do milestone. And then as their family grew, I continue, you know, they, they call me because yeah. of that relationship and that trust. Yeah. I, I'm thinking about like the best doctors and the best folks that I've, I've ever 
uh, including my parents. They were they were they were they were amazing at their craft, and I think it was not only because they were good at sort of the medical piece, but um, there was a relationship piece that they transferred to me. Now I'm curious about this because I was thinking about this literally in the past 12 hours. Um, and I was I was reflecting on this last night. Um, uh, for those of us who are the type of people who are uh, kind of, I, I, I guess I would, I feel like I fall into the, the realm of relationship marketing. Mm -hmm. um, okay, yeah, great. So I'm <laughs> fighting with your professors too. But also at the same time, in my mind, relationship marketing means being present and taking time. And now I'm at a point in my business where I've got more clients than time. Um, I've got also more administ like I for each client I onboard, there's more administration that I have to do. And each iteration of my program, I have to go and find new relationships, which means I'm constantly on calls. I'm constantly, you know, and it's beginning to feel like wow this is getting overwhelming how do you how do you how uh how do you balance the servant's heart in a relationship marketing um place without burning yourself or pulling yourself in a million different directions where you just kind of burn out in the ether or just burn out in general yeah i think burnout for creatives and for you know, people like us who are high touch relationship is probably one of the biggest struggles. Um, it, and it's one thing that I'm struggling with now as my business grows. I just brought on two team members to specifically start um, lightening the load for me where I can focus on where I am the most passionate about. No one else can do it but me. Mm. But there are things that you can kind of start to offload, you know, those redundant tasks. You know, if you start to realize you do answer emails in a, in a certain way. Um, and you know, it can be one of those quick calls. You got an email from so-and-so, this is their question, you know, and you can just, you know, tell them how to reply right away, you know, cause it's one of those things where I have like an hour carpool in the morning and an hour carpool in the evening. So it's one of those things where, what can you do to multitask? And if someone is, can be in your inbox, and if they're just standard like template replies, you know, with your personal touch that you've kind of went through and, and outlined. But if there are those that need to be a little bit more personal, then you can definitely address it. Um, and then it's just one of those things where I think it's more powerful in duplicating yourself and others instead of trying to be the one and only. Um, because once you pour yourself into someone else and you allow them to grow and they do the same thing to someone else, that's more of a ripple effect than you could ever make by yourself. So I think building that team and empowering your team and letting them even take the lead in some things where you think only you can do, I think you'd be surprised at the amount of value that you're delivering to your clients because in their mind, they're not just getting you, but they're getting this incredible team behind you and you're all supporting them. Freaking, freaking awesome. Um, I think a couple things, um, and and I know that when I first came into this space, I used to be like, automation, routinization, bad. But this is where it makes sense. Like, um, if I'm spending my time burning my wheels out on, um, uh, you know, constant, constant emails that I could be offboarding, you know, and um, uh, uh, or, or turning them into an automation or a routinization, I can still focus on what makes me a million dollar guy, which is the re relationship aspect of things. Um, so we got a couple people, Jody, Cassie Brown is a total rock star. I agree. Guess what? Brian Brown is recognized. Brian Brown is is sharing the spotlight. That's my daughter-in-law. <laughs> Brian, is that the old school puppet that you have? As your... <laughs> I remember that puppet. Um, Alex, hey, someone saying hi to Cordone. Hello, Mark. Thumbs, thumbs, thumbs. Kiss. Good to see you too. Um, we got Cassie here. Cassie. Um. Oh. 
and it activated my uh, voice activated <laughs> Amazon system when I said Alexa, Alexa off. <laughs> so, um, Cassie, how do we actually keep in touch with you now? And and what does this mean for folks who want to work with you? Um, well, I'm on Facebook and Instagram most of the time. And I am launching my new website, uh, CassieBrown.co. And that is K-A-C-I. Looks like Casey, but it's not. <laughs> and um, we have a free group. Um, is it okay if I mention our free? Absolutely. Okay. So our free group is um, Laptop Life Accelerator. And that is just the one where we pour in and share, you know, remote job um, listings, encouragement, mindset type stuff. Um, I did rope you into being a guest speaker in there um, a few months ago. So we need to schedule that. Um, but it's just that is that is my give back. That is that is my my heart and my passion that I do with um my partner, Tara Bashal, and um, she has an incredible story just like me. When you talk with about community, you know, you bring in other people because they'll only make you better, you know, and she has a completely different, you know, life experience than I. Um, she knows the struggles. Her family have had similar struggles. And um, we just, we are so passionate about, you know, helping others realize that there is more. Unbelievable. Laptop Life Accelerator is the group. Join it if you're feeling it. If you're feeling it, join it. This is the part that we've been talking about for months, Cassie. And you told me you were nervous a couple months ago. You just crushed this golden mic, dude. Oh my gosh. Like you have no idea when I was sitting here in the lobby for 10 minutes, I'm thinking I'm going to die. I'm not even going to make it to like go live. <laughs> I was going to, I was keeping you on hot seat. I was actually just watching you like squirm the whole time. Like I could see you in the lobby section. <laughs> like meditating. And, going <laughs> and then I saw you like, yo, where are you? I'm in the lobby. I'm in the lobby. I'm like, sure. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Cassie, you killed it. You killed Thank it. You. Uh, we're going to have you back. Um, thank you for being so open about your story. Much, much, much appreciated. It's a, it's a amazing story. Um, an amazing, a, a tremendous beast that was unleashed as a result of, of maybe some of the darkest times you've ever gone through. So congratulations to you. Congratulations to Adam. Um, congratulations to all Southerners and the university of Georgia, Go dogs! Um, this weekend, hey, I got a shout out to Atlanta, but I don't miss the traffic. Here's the deal, Cassie. The golden mic is officially, welcome to the fraternity and sorority. The golden mic is officially coming down from your ceiling and it's resting in front of you. Yep. <laughs> For two minutes or less, the golden mic translates into every language all across the world. Brian's listening. Alexa's listening, Jody's listening, um, the Make Money Coaching Group is listening, we're all listening, and it's going even further. Seven continents are listening. It's live, the mic is hot, and you can say whatever it is that you want. So Cassie Brown, you are on the golden mic live. Well, I think like just my biggest advice that I could give to anyone is just reflect and think about it. Take a few minutes today. Like, are you where you want to be? Um, and preparing for the interview today, like I just kept going back to, it's more about what we're willing to settle for than it is what we think we deserve or earned. Because that puts us in a spot where somebody has to give us something. Whereas what we are willing to settle for keeps us in the driver's seat. And there's not many things in life you have control over but you do have control over what you're willing to settle for, what you're willing to fight for, and what you're willing to ultimately invest your time for. And I mean, for us, it's it's our family. You know, it may look totally different for other people. Um, and I think that's the most beautiful thing in the world is that it is organic. It should be ever-changing. 
you know, don't ever feel guilty if, oh my gosh, I, I've mapped this out. This was my plan. I need to stick to my plan because you think you've already invested so much to the plan. And sometimes, sometimes quitting is as much freedom as you need. Like that may not be the plan and it's okay to walk away from it. Um, that, that was me in my corporate days. You know, that was one of the hardest decisions I ever made because I'm not a quitter. Um, but just that mental anguish over, over quitting and walking away and not being able to tough through something, you know, I think there, that's where the organic definition of success really comes in. What looked like success for you 10 months ago or 10 years ago, it's okay if it's different today, but go for it, go, go towards it with everything you've got. Boom. Golden oh, mic. you dropped the golden mic before <laughs> Dude, I, did. I was going to ask you not to drop that mic. It's made of gold. That's an expensive mic. You just broke it. You owe me some money, Cassie Brown. <laughs> you just crushed it, sister. Episode 80 of the Golden Mic Live, one of the most special episodes I can, I can think of in, in near history. Thank you, Cassie, so much. We're coming back tomorrow. Sarah, I'll see you in a couple minutes. Thanks for the thumbs up. Um, here's the dealio. If you're feeling good and you're living in your full purpose, what is your responsibility to change history for the better? We're going to see you tomorrow. Cassie, it's a wrap. Welcome to the club. Bye. See ya.